Are you still using the same password everywhere? I see you say my last name, a few digits, um, maybe like a, a hashtag or something. Let's fix that once and for all. We'll set up an app that lets you have a unique password for every website that you use, so that if one of them gets hacked, your other accounts are still safe. My favorite app for doing this is called 1Password, and we'll set it up together. Over here on 1Password.com, I'm going to click Try 1Password for free. So we're gonna set up an account. I'm gonna click Try Free for 14 days under the Personal and Family tab. And I'm just gonna fill out my name and my email address. I'm going to use a disposable email address because I already have an account, so I gotta use a separate one. And then click Create Account. They're gonna send a six digit code to my email, so I'm just gonna grab that six digit code, copy it, and paste it. Now, 1Password will ask me to come up with a master password. The 1Password, hence the name of the software, that you'll need to access all your other passwords. This should be a password that you've never used before. So it should not be a password that you have used before. <laughs> Seriously, don't be that person who uses a password that they also use at other places as their master password. Some other place gets hacked. Now people can access all of your passwords. Very bad idea. What I like to do is I like to search memorable password generator, and then you end up on this website. I like to change the setting to phrase password. And now what I wanna do is I want to choose one of the passwords. I can keep clicking generate other. I wanna choose one that I can picture in my mind so it's easy to memorize. This is actually a very fun one that showed up. Bygone quite chic mansion. I can, I can picture in my head a mansion that is quite chic, but from a bygone era. So I actually really like this one. And I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this password and just chuck it into a temporary note that I've got over here. You don't wanna do this. Um, it's fine to write it down temporarily, but you don't want to store it in your notes app randomly forever. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, back to the website of 1Password. I'm just going to paste this password and go next. Okay, I'm not going to fill in my credit card information because it's just a trial account. All right, it'll take one second. Now it says save your emergency kit. So this is your emergency kit. It's a document that has all the information that you need to get into your account if you ever get locked out or that a loved one would need to get into your 1Password account, which they would need to get into other accounts if something ever were to happen for you. Not fun to think about, but it's something that you gotta take care of. So what is on this emergency kit? It has the sign-in address for 1Password, the email address you used, a secret key, we'll talk about that in a second, and your password, meaning your master password. Now, what is this secret key? The secret key is just something that you're gonna need to put in to log on to 1Password on a new device in addition to your master password. So, what I want you to do with this emergency kit is I want you to print it, okay? Print it out, and on the printed copy, write down your master password. Then store it somewhere safe, like maybe a deposit box or a safe in your house or somewhere where it's not easily found, but you know where it is. If you want, Print another copy, write down your master password and give it to your partner, your parent, anyway, someone you trust so that if you ever lose your copy or something happens to you, you know, people can log into your 1Password account. Then take a copy where you don't fill in your master password and just save that on your cloud drive. So for me, that would be, for example, my documents folder on iCloud drive. Do not only save a copy of the emergency kit on your iCloud Drive or Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever, because what if you cannot get into your 1Password, you need to access your emergency kit, but you first need to log into your iCloud Drive, Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever, except the password for that service isn't 1Password. You don't wanna be in that situation, okay? So do that with the emergency kit. Now, once that is all completed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually install 1Password on all of your devices. So let's install it here on the computer on the Mac first. So you can just click get the apps right here and click one password for Mac. Okay, and you'll see this screen. If you don't see this exact screen, there might be a slight different screen telling you, hey, do you already have an account, yes or no? Just click the, the relevant button and you'll show up on a screen like this. Now it's already pre-filled my secret key, but if it had not, I could, go, I could have gone to my emergency kit and I could have actually copied my secret key and then put it in here. All I need to do is type my master password. I already forgot it. Bygone quite chic mansion, there we go. And I'm gonna just paste that in here and then I'm gonna click sign in. It'll take a second. Okay, what do we want? Do I wanna add one password in my menu bar? That means do I want it always to be up here? I do, and do I wanna open it in the background when I log in? I do. Do I wanna use touch ID to unlock one password? I do, but I got my laptop in clamshell mode so I don't wanna set that up right now. One password basically has 
items in it. An item can be a login information for a website. It can just be a secure note. It can be some cred a credit card that you use with all the information that can be really handy. It can autofill your credit cards, okay? Now, after you install 1Password on your Mac or your PC or whatever it is, I want you to go install it on all of your other devices. So install it on your phone, install it on your tablet, install it on your other computer, okay? If you do want to install it on your phone, there's a really easy way to do that. You download the app on your phone, and then to set it up, you don't actually have to go ahead and type your secret key again. What you can do is go to the one password preferences, and under accounts, there's a button here that says set up other devices. All you do is scan the QR code with your phone, and that'll help you set up one password on your phone. Okay, then you want to go install one password in all of your browsers. And if this seems like a lot of work, don't worry. This is just one time work, very easy, okay? Um, for Safari users, the way to install 1Password is actually like this. You go to Safari and then to Preferences. And then under the Extensions tab, you just want to make sure that 1Password over here is checked. For me, it's already checked. And what does that mean? It means there's this button here. And if I click it, it shows all the same items that live in my 1Password. Now, my main browser is not Safari, but it's Firefox. So let me just open up Firefox. And I want to install 1Password for Firefox. It's very easy. I just Google 1Password Firefox. If you're using Chrome, Google 1Password Chrome. You get to this page on the app store of the browser that you use, and I'm gonna click add to Firefox here. I have to give it a lot of permissions, <laughs> which is fine. I do wanna allow it to run in private windows. Okay, now I've got it installed, and you see that there's this button here also, and if I click it, it usually takes a second for some reason. Well, I guess maybe we have to restart the browser. I always love it when things, things go right when I demo stuff on camera. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's one password. Here's all the stuff that's also in, in the one password app. Okay. Now let's say I want to create a new account on a website, like on Reddit. Let me show you how to do that. I'll go click sign up. And by the way, I'm showing this in Google Chrome. Just, you know, a lot of you might be using Google Chrome, but it works the same in any browser. I'm going to fill in my email address. And then I'm going to say continue. I'm gonna choose a username, here's some suggestions, and then there's this password field. And notice when I click the password field, it says use suggested password. So if I click that, you get this pop-up, which is a one password pop-up. And it says, hey, we chose a username and a password, would you like to save it? And you can choose some settings, but let's ignore those for now. Now I'll click save, it's saved to one password. I do have to do the captcha, which I love. Oh, I don't have to do it, look at that, sign up. There we go. Now I have a new Reddit account. Now let's say I want to log into Reddit. So I'm gonna skip all this stuff because I wanna show you, show you guys how to log in <laughs> to Reddit. Okay, skip. All right, there we go. Um, I wanna show you guys how to log into Reddit. So I'm actually just gonna log out and then log in. Now when you're logging into a website, you just click log in and automatically 1Password will come up with this thing, with a suggestion. You just click it, it fills in your username and password, and you go log in, boom. So you don't actually know, in this case, what is your Reddit password. All you know is your 1Password, and you get a unique password for every website, just like this. Now, of course, you probably already have accounts for all of the services that you wanna use. So what do we wanna do? We want to, first of all, get your current passwords into 1Password, and then change them to unique passwords. So let's say you already have a New York Times account. I'm gonna go log in to the New York Times, and I'm gonna type my email address. And if you weren't using a password manager before, you probably know what your password is. So I'm just gonna type my password, and I'm gonna click log in. Okay, then I'm gonna go over to my account preferences, and I'm gonna go over to account. And I'm gonna say I wanna update my password. And so I'm gonna enter my current password, and then I wanna have a new password. And if I click that, one password shows up and says, hey, use a suggested password. So I'm gonna click that, again, save it. Sometimes it doesn't quite grab the, the username or email address that you're using. So you just enter it yourself like so, and you can change the name. I can call it New York Times so it looks nice and click save and click save here, and now I've changed my password. So what I recommend that you do over the next couple of days and weeks is every time you log in somewhere or every time you're using a website or service, just make sure to change your password and put it in 1Password. Now I'm gonna open the 1Password app just to show you what happens. There is a Reddit entry with my username and my password, and if I click on it, I can reveal this password. I can also 
conceal it again. And you'll see they got tagged with reddit.com. There's also a New York Times entry with my username and my password. Okay, and you'll see that this got tagged to myaccount.newyorktimes.com. That's fine. I'm actually going to edit this and just say this should live on newyorktimes.com, but it's fine. Now, why is this helpful? Because if I want to log in to the New York Times on my phone, the New York Times app on the phone will identify itself as being from newyorktimes.com and it will actually allow you to autofill your password with one password on your phone inside the New York Times app. This is really handy. That is why you need to have this information over here on newyorktimes.com sitting inside the entry in one password. Now I want to give you a couple of extra tips for using 1Password. One is that you can add a lot more information to it than just usernames and passwords. For example, if I click plus right here, I can actually click wireless router and I can click the name of my base station and the base station password. I can give the network name and I can put in the wireless network password and a couple of other things, which is very handy if you want to have a really secure password on your wireless router as well, which you should have, and you can then share it with other folks. Now there's some cool things. Let's say I'm changing my wireless network password password to be more secure inside one password. Uh, I can say the network name. Let's say the network name is um, watching over you or something like that. Um, I can actually go in here and click this generator icon and it will generate a password for me. Now, this is a little hard to share with friends if friends come over to my house and ask me what my Wi-Fi password is. So I can change the type and just set that to a memorable password and maybe have it three words instead of four and something like this. And then I can just go ahead and click save. And now when someone comes over to my house, I can just go like, hey, here's the Wi-Fi password, you know, put it into your phone. Now, another thing you can do is you can add software license keys in here, your social security number, password information, but also something that I think is very handy, uh, or bank accounts, very handy, is um, credit cards. So I can click here and just add my cardholder name, whether it's Visa, MasterCard, whatever, credit card number, the three-digit verification number, expiration date, and all that stuff. And so then when I go and buy something online, I can just autofill the credit card information. Now, the final thing I want to show you is that you can create multiple vaults. So if I click over here, you can actually see that I have a personal vault, but I can create a new vault and I can call it, for example, business. So let's say you have a very big split between your personal and your business life. So you can call it work, maybe. You could actually keep all of your personal logins in here and all of your work logins in here. Or you could create a new vault and call it family. And then you could put, for example, your Netflix username and password in here so you can share your Netflix account with your family. Now, what about those alternative password managers that I talked about before, in case you don't love 1Password? One of them is called Dashlane. I've used Dashlane in the past and I was pretty happy with it. I ended up switching to 1Password because at the time, 1Password seemed more focused on Apple users and its apps just worked a little bit better on Apple devices. But now 1Password is available on pretty much any platform. So. Dashlane, honestly, is a very good choice as well. Now, another password manager that you could use is called Bitwarden. Bitwarden is open source, and it has a free version that does pretty much everything that you could want to do. I haven't used Bitwarden myself, but I checked out some of the reviews, for example, for the iPhone app, and the reviews are really, really good. So if you're looking to use a password manager, but you don't really want to spend a couple bucks a month on an app like 1Password, try Bitwarden. It's totally free, and we'll do the same thing. I also want to tell you about two ways that you could store your usernames and passwords that I don't recommend. And one of these is if you're an Apple user to use the feature called Keychain, which is built into your iPhone, iPad, Mac, whichever you have. The Apple Keychain can generate unique passwords and autofill them for you in the same way that an app like 1Password can. But what if you buy an Android phone or you buy a Windows PC or you're forced to use a Windows PC or an Android phone? Apple's keychain feature will not be available for you and it will be very inconvenient because there is no good way of transferring your passwords out of keychain into a different password manager. I also don't recommend saving your usernames and passwords inside your browser, which is something that you may have been doing. But what if you're using a different browser on one device versus another device and you change your password some there and the change gets reflected in the browser on say your phone, but not in the browser on your computer? It's a synchronization nightmare. You also can't store things like Wi-Fi passwords in these built-in browser things. And sometimes they don't even let you generate passwords, only save the same password that you're using everywhere else. So it's much less secure than using a dedicated password manager like 1Password. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like button on your way out and have a great day. Ciao.